Hello. This is the fourth part of a set of five videos on the physicalists. And today we're going to briefly talk about Gustav Fechner and his concept of psychophysics. Fechner was born in a small village in the Sorbian region of eastern Germany in 1801. His father was a Lutheran pastor who died when his son was still a young child. The boy was gifted and excelled at schoolwork beginning his medical studies at the age of 16 and later entering the University of Leipzig. After graduation he chose not to practice medicine but instead to study physics, being appointed as a university lecturer in 1824 and later promoted to a full professor. He worked hard but became severely ill in 1839 when he was in his late thirties and spent the next decade essentially as an invalid. He then made an impressive recovery invented what he called psychophysics, and went on to publish a mass of scientific and philosophical books and papers. He also pioneered a scientific approach to the study of aesthetics. He died in 1887 at the age of 86. Already suffering from the effects of overwork and nervous collapse, Fechner began to study after images in the late 1830s, staring at the sun through tinted glasses. His work garnered praise, but he suffered from severe photophobia as a result and suffered a total emotional collapse. This led him to immure himself in a darkened room for over three years, trying all sorts of treatments for his condition. He had resigned his professorship by this time and faced the depressing prospect of living the rest of his life as an invalid. Unable to read, he spent much of his time in contemplation, beginning to believe that he was on the verge of discovering the secret of the world and worrying obsessively about the relationship between mind and body. If both matter and consciousness exist, what is their relationship and how can they be reconciled? Rejecting dualistic accounts, Fechner had concluded that mind and body constituted a single psychophysical reality. They had an essential identity. But how to demonstrate this scientifically? His resolution to this problem came to him one morning in October 1850 in a sudden and overpowering insight. If he could establish quantitative relations between particular mental sensations and bodily stimuli, he would have proved the unity of mind and body, he thought. As his health returned, Fechner set about examining his hypothesis. A key resource was Ernst Weber's work on the perception of sensation. Fechner exhaustively investigated and extended Weber's work, finally publishing his detailed study of what he termed psychophysics in 1860. Fechner was a careful and systematic experimenter, and he eventually tabulated and computed over 24,000 judgments in the course of his research getting subjects to lift weights, look at lights, listen to noises and tones, and look at color samples and so on, and then to pronounce them the same or different. It was a vast study of human sensitivity. Whilst confirming Weber's basic findings regarding just noticeable differences, Fechner also improved on them, realizing that the results showed that as the magnitude of a stimulus increased, it needed to increase at a geometric rate to be noticed as a sensation. That is, it can be portrayed as a logarithmic curve, as presented in his now famous formula S equals K log R, where S is the strength of the sensation, R is the stimulus magnitude, and K is a constant. Fechner saw much more clearly than Weber had the philosophical implications of this work. That is, that an element of the human consciousness could now be measured scientifically and appeared to follow an exact mathematical law. As such, Fechner occupies a key place in the slow emergence of scientific psychology, and the importance of his role was later acknowledged by Wilhelm Wundt. Some of his findings were later modified, but through what he called psychophysics, Fechner can be seen as the person who essentially established psychology as an experimental discipline, and his research methods came to be widely emulated. 
Fechner was resolutely opposed to the materialistic and mechanistic views that increasingly dominated Western scientific thought during the 19th century. In this regard, whilst his work was rigorously scientific, it was also inspired by a deeply mystical philosophical sense that was unusual even in the 19th century and continues to be rare in the modern scientific world. A crucial part of Fechner's philosophy was the concept of panpsychism, the belief that all physical matter was in some sense infused with consciousness. There were obvious echoes of Neoplatonism in this view, as well as of Spinoza and Leibniz. Fechner developed these ideas in a massive work entitled The Zend Avesta, or Things of Heaven and the Hereafter. For him, all living things, even plants, had souls, and this gave him an enhanced sense of the vividness of nature. It is ironic, of course, that whilst Fechner's work has had an enormous impact on experimental psychology, it was informed by a philosophy that would now be rejected by the great majority of psychologists, many of whom utilized his research methods within their own fundamentally materialistic frameworks of knowledge, a mindset which Fechner had hoped to invalidate through his work.